Humans have always had a drive to explore. Space is the ultimate challenge. And astronaut spacewalks are perhaps the most dangerous task of all because astronauts face deadly radiation, extreme temperatures, and micrometeoroids. They are protected from all this by their spacesuits. Here at the University of Maryland's Nusha Buoyancy Tank, one of only two in the nation, we're developing our own suit called the MX2 to be used underwater in a simulated microgravity environment in order to research new technologies and techniques for working in space. Hi, I'm Adam. I'm Ali. I'm Heather, and we're going to show you what we do here at the Space Systems Lab. Okay, guys, so what's the plan for today's dive? Well, we're going to put you in the tank and have you try to assemble the eased truss structure that flew in the space shuttle. And Heather, you've made some changes as well to the restraint layer of the suit. Yes. How is that going to affect us today? It should be stronger. We had um, some problems with a uh, few of them not holding as well as we'd like. Dives require careful planning and execution. We follow a checklist so that we do everything in the right order. Before the dive, we make sure our main and backup air supplies are filled and ready for use and connect air, power, and data cables. We also turn on lights, cameras, and recording software. Getting into the suit is harder than putting on ordinary clothes and requires some help. When the subject is ready, we close and pressurize the suit, then put it in the water with a crane. Scuba divers are also in the water for safety. During the dive, we monitor the suit and record data. There are a lot of important parts on the back of our analog spacesuit, including sensors, pressure valves, and an emergency air supply. And it's very important to make sure they don't get damaged while moving around the tent. The backpack on our suit is designed to do just that. The air coming into the suit is split three ways, between the suit itself, the electronics box, and the air fill seal in the hatch. These devices here, called regulators, control the pressure in each of these lines. The air enters the suit above the subject's head and leaves through the back. The positive pressure inside the suit means that air bubbles out instead of water leaking in. To monitor how the suit subject is doing off from the surface, we need several sensors on board the suit. These sensors collect data, which we send back to the control station using a regular Ethernet cable, the kind you probably see in your home and school. Our suit uses a Mac Mini computer. It keeps track of all of our sensors and lets us know how the suit is holding up. We keep our tank at a warm 90 degrees. This temperature is just right for divers whose skin is touching the water. But for our suit subjects, the heat can get uncomfortable, especially during hard work. That's why our test subjects wear a liquid cooling garment, just like real astronauts. The garment is basically long underwear with plastic hoses woven right into it. We pump cold water through these hoses right against the subject's skin to cool them off. The gloves, like the rest of the suit's fabric parts, are designed so that there is less tension in the fabric at the joints. This makes them easier to flex and extend. We're developing a technology that can be used to move robots from far away by gesturing, so that if I move my arm like this, then the robot will also move its arm like this and perhaps hand me a tool as I repair something. So how do we do that? Well, we shine a light down these fiber optic cables to a measurement device called a photodiode that measures the brightness of the light and how it changes as I move my arm. Then, once we do that, we send the data to the robot, which will also move its arm in the same angle. We're working on several other exciting ideas for future research, too. One idea is to use biosensors to measure the subject's metabolic workload, or how hard they have to work to complete tasks. We're also working on an extra weight vest to simulate partial gravity, like on the Moon or Mars. That's it from the Space Systems Lab.